Yeah. All right, guys. Welcome to our podcast, Raw Shit, with our amazing guest, the king of uh, social media, Thomas Mo. Right? <laughs> How about yeah, Mo? Yeah. Thank you for being here, man. Thank you for having me on. No, no, that's our pleasure, man. And uh, my amazing co-host, uh, IFBB Pro, John Lofthouse, as usual, looking sexy. I don't like it when you introduce me as IFBB Pro. Yeah, it sounds better. No, I don't like it. No? Really? No, no I feel like a prick. <laughs> well, no, no, no. That's, the, that's just you being humble. But you know what? You can't, you can't take, let's say, if, if you go to the GP and you call him uh, engineer, he wouldn't like it. So no. he's a doctor, right? <laughs> Is it He's in your Instagram? Huh? Have, you got it in your, have you got it in your Instagram? Yeah, hypocrite. I put it on my Instagram. I haven't done it as the, uh, I haven't done it as the actual username, though. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. Normally, That's people right. change the username. I'm like, no, I'm not. I, but I have put a cheeky IFBB Pro in there. Yeah, no. That's fine. <laughs> that's okay, then. That doesn't yeah. make me too much of a prick. Um, I know a lot of bodybuilders who don't put it in their profile, you know? Yeah, I don't know. At all. Some people love it though, don't they? Yeah, that's the first thing they do when they off the off the stage. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, th I, th I think if you have an in, um, if you have a like a, a sort of a, a plan in your head that your IFBB status um, will get you in, up to a different platform in terms of business, then yeah. if that was the goal, then you straight away put it on there, and it's yeah, time okay. for this is a new chapter in your life, you know. But yeah. some people are established already. They don't give a fuck if they put it mm. on. <laughs> mm. it, doesn't, it doesn't change your life, though. I'm in my mum's house. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's good you're not living in a gap. I relegated. You know? I relegated. I'm looking for another place. Right. You're right. just, you uh, just at the firehouse, aren't you, man? Tom? We're, no, we're moving out. We're still, we're still renting, but we're just uh, upgrading a little bit, moving to, do you know, like that Sid Cup area? Yeah, I know Sidcup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm cl I'm closer to Crayford now, and I'm closer to Muscle Work. So for prep, it's just going to be easier to to drive ten minutes, tre treadmill, come back, and then eat, and then go back to train. So yeah. did you, where did you train before that? I was at uh, King's Gym. You know, James Hollingshead's gym. Yeah, yeah. So yeah that's kinda, why I'm, I was looking at that pictures. You know. Uh, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's a really nice sort of spit and sawdust gym. I, I tend to prefer that kind of environment when on prep. You know. Yeah. Just put, puts you in that mind frame and that mindset. It's a little bit better than the kind of pristine, clean gym. Of course, of course. And uh, uh, I mean, obviously, we all, when we prep, we have to have a day where we train in somewhere else. And mm, uh, Of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's like, yeah. uh, you know, it's a leg day in the weekend, so I'm going to go and train in Muscle Works or, uh, mm -hmm. you know, somewhere else, up north. Yeah, yeah. Up, yeah. Just up north. <laughs> <laughs> Rock House is my home gym, but I couldn't, and you know, and they'll... They'll be watching this, but they're fine if I say I couldn't train there five days a week, man. Mm. It, it you been to Ultra, have you been up to Ultraflex? Not yet. I had the. I, I nearly was scheduled to go because there was a. I was going to a bodybuilding show, but then it got cancelled, so I didn't go. I yeah. wanted that. Looks the nuts. Yeah, up we'll, we'll, we'll go up because I'm a. I'm a virgin Ultraflex virgin. Yeah, man. Uh, me too. And I've been invited by uh, by Cuba a couple of times, and uh, yeah. And I'd I'd love to go and you know all the equipment that I see over there is yeah. really advanced, yeah. like mm -hmm. like some proper shit, you know. Thing is though, I'll go over there and well, and I I say that I do like new toys, but I, yeah, I generally just do the basic stuff. Mm. Yeah, 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 I'll go over there and I'll look at everything. I'll get excited, but then I'll be like, ah, oh, this dumbbell press. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Have like you realized a, it's, uh, at muscle works is so much cybex cybex gear. Yeah, kind of yeah. like when I first went when I first went to Muscle Works, I was like, I had to message Callum the coach, and I was like, shit, this is like a totally different machine. Well, how are we setting this up? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah of course. The Arsenal strength, they got the Arsenal strength stuff at the Muscle mm -hmm. Works. Right? I'm not sure yeah. of it. Like that. It's really yeah. like clunky, like it's really heavy. Or the like, hack, yeah, yeah. The hack squat is like a space machine. It's, it's yeah, mate. It feels like you're on a rocket, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you been to Monster Gym? Nah. Yeah, I've been there. In Chesson. Have you seen that that leg press that you have to actually climb up to it? Yeah. Yeah, I've seen it. I've seen it. Yeah. What is the fuck, man? Yeah, I've been I've been well, I didn't use it properly, but I've obviously, you know, I jumped on it. I'll going. get injured you're getting like, up there. You're like up there. <laughs> you know, imagine try, with my knee trying to get up there and I'm like by the time I get to the top, it's like, okay, I'm done here. I'm I'm going down. Yeah. You know? It's uh but I realize that a lot of us have uh 
you know, certain like preferences when it comes to gyms, like, okay, I'm training legs. I like to be in, let's mm. say, for example, monster, because they've got amazing gym, uh, like uh, leg equipment and that mm. kind of that, that leg equipment takes the pressure off my knees. But if I use it somewhere else, mm. yeah. it doesn't feel the same. Do you understand yeah. what I'm trying to say? Yeah. 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 The, uh, the pendulum at King's gym is nice as well. The pendulum squat at King's I, is perfect. I saw, I saw it. It was amazing. Um, we had a physique warehouse before King's even opened and I didn't like it back then. Cause obviously the first time you use that, that machine, you can't put more than 10 kilos on it because no, no, it's a no. new movement. Your, yeah. your body's not used to it. I'm putting like tens here. I'm looking at people around me. I was like, listen, I've just squatted five plates aside and I can't even do a 10 plate, like a 10 mm. kilo plate on this. I don't yeah. like this anymore. I don't want to play, you know? <laughs> and, um, and then you build yourself up until now I see people putting so much on it and, it, it, and, and the development of your quads completely changed, mm -hmm. you know, um, mm -hmm. completely changed. So I'm, I'm, uh, I, I agree with you on that, uh, Tom. Mm. So, uh, um, Tom, I've, I've, um, I've, I have a few questions here that I obviously wanted to ask and everything, but we were, yeah. we're probably going to flow into a lot of them and answer it before we even yeah. Ask them, but uh, how, how did you start in the industry? I mean, uh, we can see that you're you have a big following on uh, on uh, social media. But uh, mm -hmm. when did you start with you know bodybuilding generally? It was uh, I think for the majority of us, we tend to to train the first few years of training is uh, not as optimal as possible. You kind of get wrapped up in that that bro style split, and it wasn't until sort of 2012 where. I uh, ran into Luke Johnson, who was uh, who's the owner of PTC. I know John John knows of uh, the company, yes. yeah. and uh, it was at that point where it kind of shifted from anecdotal feedback about training and nutrition, and, and I was reading a lot of Alan Aragon. Alan Aragon used to do the research reviews, so I remember printing off rings of rings of that and kind of going through his work and Brad Schoenfeld's work about training. So it was just that 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 side of things that kind of got me excited into training a little bit differently, and yeah. then under his guidance, I, I started training properly in 2012, then thought I'd, I'd jump into a show as a junior, yeah, kind of placed well third, but there's massive areas still now that need to be brought up. And along the way, I kind of got, kind of got mixed up and, and my, my pendulum kind of swings from bodybuilding one time. And then I'm more, more focused on business and social media. So <coughs> it, at that point it was like, right, I need to go all in on the business side of things. And, and now I feel that I've kind of set my stool out to a certain degree that I can kind of now really focus on an, an effective off season with Callum once the gyms are open in, in England, whatever that is. Yeah, yeah, of course. And, then, and then, and then push for a better show in, in 2021. So yeah, it was 2012. That was, that was the kind of turning point for it. All right. Right. Uh, so you, you competed in, in what federation? It was NABBA. It was junior, junior NABBA. Yeah. Right, right, right. I remember the picture uh, of you in the, in the kitchen. Is it you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was it. You, did, you, had a, you had a man bun back then. Yeah, That's that was it, it the man bun. My, my, my missus said, well, yeah, no, not my missus. My I mum, haven't, uh, said, when we, you get man bun, I was like, nah, man we bun. Haven't had access, we haven't had access to, to hairdressers. I can pretty much get back into the man bun. I might, yeah. That was one of my best preps, so I'll kind of go back to that <laughs> mindset. Man bun. I, I uh, just shaved my head, shaved my head off completely. and uh, yeah, yeah. Start, It's starting to come back now, but, you know, I, I like to... Oh yeah. I, I, listen, I, I would go to any barber in the world can cut my hair any time, but you touch my beard. I'll fucking kill you. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you know? Beards all like that. No, don't do not touch my beard. I've been growing it since I was 13. I grew up. I, I grew this this morning. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. How's, um, how's lockdown been overall for you, man? Uh, it's Business been... wise and, uh, for, for uh, yeah, I mean the the initial the initial kind of shock of the gym going and and, and like we said the the equipment at Cyber the, the Cybex equipment at Muscle Works going from that to a band and a, like a ten kilo dumbbell outside was 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 hard you know and it's even the small things like trying to progress a, a band with you know what do I write in my logbook do I write 10, 10 reps green band one purple it was just so until until like three or four weeks ago where my friend uh, who's, whose dad was an ex-powerlifter decided to say, oh, he's got a garage. And I was like, well, why didn't you tell me this at the fucking start of, of lockdown? And now I, I ordered some plates. So I've got like 200 kilo worth of plates and, and kind of stripped it back to just barbell work. And it's been really nice, but I'm kind of, I'm, I'm clucking to get back into the gym. But as for business, it kind of, it grew quite quickly just because 
the accountability that people needed in terms of coaching or, or, or exercises or, or workout plans just shot up. So took advantage of when we went into lockdown, did some videos on, on kind of home training systems. And so, yeah, so it's, it's, it's been good from a business standpoint. So, so I have, I have a question here. It's, it's, it raises a, a, a big question. So yeah. people, people started to contact, you know, coaches, you know, generally, but yourself, obviously as a, as an example, um, do you think it's worried that they're going to get fat and out of shape or is it boredom or it, I, what, what do you think it is that made people get into it again mm, or, or was... kind of, you know, getting more into it or, yeah. or kind of contact? I mean, we all know no one started earning, you know, it's like mm. everyone stopped earning at that point. Mm. Yeah. I mean, we had the sort of furlough scheme over here. So we had like 80%. Of the, uh, so, so they were still getting some form of money. A couple of my clients had to hard, kind of hold back on payments, which is fine. We can restart again when they, when they're back into work. But I think it was kind of like 75% of the people that were, that understood training, but when it was taken from a, a gym scenario into a home set and they didn't know how to replicate any work with bands or, or dumbbells. So there was quite a large influx of people that had decent training knowledge, but when it came to home training, nothing yeah. was there. And then the, 20, the rest of the people were just uh, individuals that I, I think they thought, right, I'm, I'm never going to get a period of time like this in my life where I can dedicate to changing my physique. So work have messaged me and said, I'm off for eight, 12 weeks let me try and put this time into efficiently gaining weight, losing weight. And at that point they were like, right, let's, so I had a lot of people that were doing like eight to 12 week plans that wanted to get into condition who have jumped off now, which is fine. But that gave them that, you know, that gave them that period of time to go, you know, I'm going on holiday in the, the year and now I can finally look my best. Yeah, right. I had the same. I had loads. I had my business went up. Mm. I mean, I've actually taken this in a, like, as an opportunity because you know, when we were, when we last trained, I was still pretty much just PT and full time. Yeah. yeah and not really paying much attention to, to online coaching, but mm. I've taken this opportunity to be able to pretty much shift fully over to online. Now the influx yeah. of people I had was, mm. um, was mad. Mm. Like you know, said, was, there was plenty of people still with money, you know, and then they're just yeah. left to jack fucking all to yeah. do and a lot, a lot of uh, females as well. And you've seen them doing their Instagram lives. They kind of, they, they kind of use their Instagram live platform as a, as a way to kind of test the waters. And then in particular, my missus, she, uh, she pays, I think 15 pound a month and she gets workouts every day. And this, this lady in particular was working in a one-to-one -one job in London, probably mm. you know normal PT wage. Now she's earning like 60 grand a month through the people you know, wow. so it, it, it is, yeah, well, it's 15 pound and she's got like three and a half, 4,000 members. So no, it's no. just, it's, in, it's incredible. And it's really nice to see people kind of taking yeah, the jump yeah. and using the time. I've been, I've been spending so many years just focused so much on training that that's what I'm trying to get into now is mm. more the business side. Because at the end of the day, we all know an IFBB pro card ain't setting you up for life. Mm. Yeah, of course. It helps. Of course. But. It ain't making it ain't making that bank as, as yeah of course yeah. it's like and it's the same sort of people like people when they do their level two or level three PT qualification that's like the first thing they put in their bio it's like yeah. that's just a, a tiny amount of the bigger right. picture of training and supplementation there's so much more out there yeah. so once once you nailed it you know and and your style in particular John the the, the old school it, it's such a, a an aesthetically pleasing look that people just flock start flocking in now you know yeah 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 for sure. I think I think for me it's uh, it's probably harder because I mean I lost mainly every single person I had because I mainly focused on bodybuilders and mainly bodybuilders. Let's be honest here; they don't even they don't earn much money. I mean, they, mm -hmm. the bodybuilders are known to be broke most of the year because they spend a lot of their money on food, on their appearance, whatever you want to call them, on on gear, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, unfortunately, I lost mostly all my clients, but another business venture opened up for me and mm. I'm working something completely on, you know, in, in obviously the same industry, I can't announce much of it at the moment, but it's gone parallel to what I'm doing. Uh, but I don't think I'll be ever going back to, uh, to mm. online coaching again, because uh, I won't have the time. It's just as simple as that. So I'll be focusing more on myself maybe, mm. but um, it's, it's nice to know that, that the, even with the quarantine, that most most people stayed on their discipline you know mm. having people like yourselves uh you know kind of coaching them guiding them so it's uh, it's kind of cool mm. well, amazing stuff so uh, we have a we have a, a question here that um that came through um a, about three people actually asked the same question but in different ways 
Yeah, yeah. And I don't know if you guys want to talk about this subject, but uh, I'm sure it's going to be fun for everyone. Um, it's a sex sex drive post show. Mm. Sex drive post show. Post yeah. show. Uh huh. So and if you win I, the show. I, uh, <laughs> 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 yeah. Well, yeah, it's, that's a good point, actually. But obviously, a lot of it, it, we all know that it happens even with natural uh, natural competitors that they get mm. up to the show, the sex drive goes, uh, the the desire to have sex goes. Um, mm. So I don't know what what you know. How can you guys help with this? Exhaustion. I think it's exhaustion. Mm, for me, for me, it always was. I don't think I've ever had a um, a horm- like hormone because there's different ways you can lose sex drive. Right? I don't think mm. I've ever had a hormonal imbalance or whatever because of gear or whatever. But I've definitely lost my sex drive through outright mental, mm. physical exhaustion. You know, like my last show, everyone knows my last show was a nightmare, man. For my mm. last two shows was a nightmare. You add it up, it's like what 20, 20 weeks odd plus. Of being that focused, being that focused on the goal mm. when it comes to the end of it. Mm. Yeah, man, I think mental and physical exhaustion definitely ruins me. Yeah, massively. And 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 for the hormonal side of things, if you're looking at someone that has that has competed and then decides to go into some form of post cycle therapy, those five, six, seven weeks are going to be massive. You know, even with food, in, you know, even with food increasing and and stress being mitigated, and, and that that additional stress mentally has come off because you're not competing anymore. Just the the hormonal side of things, you're going to be so crashed, so bottomed out, having been done so for twenty weeks anyway. And it's kind of this, uh, this illusion that people are like, oh, but, but, but Tren is like the sex drug. And as soon as you start injecting that, it, it's, it's crazy. But even on Tren in, in contest prep scenarios, it's, it's, it's nowhere near. Like, it's, it's, yeah. I've seen people go the opposite way on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Do, do, do you think the, the calorie deficit plays a huge part when you're on Tren with lower calories mm. and, or Tren off-season with loads of calories? I think... Huge. It's the calorie intake that makes a huge difference on that, right? Yeah. Like when I've ran Tren, what I thought I wouldn't do it again in the future, but when I ran Tren on off season with higher food, the, the sex drive was, it was almost too much. It kind of went from one extreme of being, I don't want to, you know, nothing to like too much, like dog on heat is yeah. uncomfortably, you know, it's uncomfortably high. So, but then like trending and off season when food's up and, and, and body comps kind of knocked a little bit and then my blood work was just off. So it's like something I'd never do again. Yeah. I've had, an, uh, I've had a, a client a long time ago. This is actually funny. Well, it wasn't funny back then, but it's funny now. Uh, he had he had a hard on for four hours that he actually got so much in pain he had to go to A and E. And uh, uh, it's Trent Trent Trembleon. Yeah, Just Trent. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He, yeah. We'll take it. He had a hard on for four hours. He tried ice. He tried cold showers. He tried <laughs> everything. He sorry guys. He Did even he tried. Yeah, 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 yeah. He tried <laughs> masturbating. It stayed up for four hours. He was in so much pain. He ended up in uh, in uh, ER, any here in the UK, <laughs> and uh, and uh, they yeah. actually had to. Uh, I don't know what they did to him. Obviously, uh, you know, uh, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't really get into too much details here, but uh, that's a uh, that's one of the stories that I've heard. And uh, that's like a that's like a, a Brazos sketch. When they go yeah. into A and E, they're like, oh, "There's only one thing that we can do to get rid of this." <laughs> like, girls, come in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The nurses, you know. Uh, but uh, I mean, I mean, with uh, with with coming back to this, the the subject of of sex drive. I mean, uh, this is us speaking about it being enhanced. All right, mm. but you have people uh, who are natural, and we want to help those people. Uh, get their sex drive back to normal post uh, post shows, and how can we how can we use it to you know using how can we help them using food good food and and supplementation what what do you think is 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 a good stack to have post show for for a natural bodybuilder it's uh it's it's along the sort of lines is more so like a recovery diet and and team three EMJ have covered this and Newton is as well very close with him and we've we've, we've discussed this as well and. Uh, is and talking about 
sex drive. My old coach competed in natural bodybuilding show, placed quite highly. And then he got his, his girlfriend pregnant that week after him competing. So I think if the, if the sex drive is there, there's no reason to suggest that fertility is affected, but it's very much, it's very much on, on that topic of recovery diet, not, pardon the pun blowing your load too early in the sense that right we've gone from from competition prep it's time to go straight into a 500 calorie surplus and and at that point you're probably putting yourself at more risk than than good in the sense that lipids are probably going to go even worse kidney pressure as soon as you start driving body weight up quickly and especially for us assisted guys you see a lot of people that have competed at i don't know 90 key and then they they brag about on instagram they go oh, two weeks post show I'm, I'm 100 key it's like you've gained 10 key in, in two weeks there's nothing to be proud about because your blood pressure take it for me and then all of a sudden yeah. bang you know so it, it's very much uh, and and the team 3DMJ take full credit for it. And Eric Helms in particular about the recovery diet and they'll probably do a better job of explaining it to me, but it's very much about taking it far slower than, than jumping straight out of the gate into your off seasons. Of course. Of course. Uh, I think, I think even, uh, John, you've done that before, right? Well, going straight yeah. into it. Like, uh, we've all done that, you know, you finish. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, definitely. You know, we, mean, my, um, my first show, I think like my breakfast was like a whole, a whole box of, uh, cocoa pops with like a liter of chocolate milk. I remember, oh, no. I remember it cocoa specifically pops. after my first show, that was my breakfast. Yeah. And the, um, yeah, the weeks after that, that was the first time in my life that I ever got fat two mm. weeks, after, like a couple of weeks after that show, I just couldn't control it, man. But obviously yeah, it's hard for so long. It don't really bother me now, you know. I just have, just go out for a meal, and then the next day I kind of just go back to. Normally, yeah. you know, I don't really crave anything now. I've been in this for long. Even in off season, the opportunity to eat what I want, I'll yeah. just I'll wake up and eat oats, and then I'll eat chicken and rice mm. and steak and rice. Yeah. I don't really have craving for anything anymore. I've, Obviously, when I get real, real low on the diet, yeah, I fix out from a show. Yeah, I'm craving. I'm more craving fats than anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm craving like fatty. Yeah. Like I think mm. like I want lasagna and stuff like that. Like yeah, homemade, yeah. like yeah. real, uh, like what's what's the word? Heart, heartfelt, wholesome foods. No, hearty, mm. hearty. 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 It's it, yeah. Italian. Yeah 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. I don't really crave like sweets and stuff like that. Nah. No, I think that's a maturity thing though. Like when I first competed as a junior, I did the typical YouTube 10K cheat challenge, fucking, you know, McDonald's for breakfast and shit. And then you just feel like absolute garbage after. It's the worst thing. The feeling is horrible. But now, I but haven't now, had, yeah, I, I haven't had McDonald's for since January. Yeah. You see the queue for McDonald's recently. There's a lot of McDonald's near me. Ridiculous. Yeah. Crazy, yeah, yeah. it's creating it created create, create a traffic jam on my road the day yeah. it opened. Literally, I was like, <laughs> trying to get to Tesco's. I was like, What's, what's going on? I was, yeah, like, yeah. I was like, We're in, we're in lockdown, and then I realized I got around the corner, so everyone queuing to go to McDonald's. Mm. Let's what's protest, that? yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't get me started on the protest. They painted Army's hands red the other day, didn't they? Did, Did they? You see that, uh, Tom? You not seen it? The, uh, the, um, the Arnold, uh, like, twisting double bicep shot that's outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Golds. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, it's in Columbus. Is it outside Golds? Yeah, it's, 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 uh, it's in Columbus, right? Yeah. It's and, in Ohio. Uh, yeah. Yeah, well, they painted his hands red and, and sprayed on the floor, blood is on your hands, BLM. And uh, what's the funny bit is that um, it, this was obviously uh, posted on – every social big social media you know bodybuilding related mm. social media and it was an rx muscle and i actually said i mean for crying out loud 1975 in pumping iron arnold and robbie robinson were partying mm. together yeah, yeah, yeah what what kind of bullshit is this and obviously mm. i had so many of them people calling people white people calling them black but then robbie robinson himself commented and i've taken a snapshot and i sent it over to john yeah, yeah he commented and yeah. and he called arnold and the weeders out being racist towards him so obviously for me i look robbie robinson i would put him on the you know ifbb hall of fame no question about it but at the same time i have to disagree with the guy because in 1982 we had chris dickerson a black male winning the the uh, the mr olympia you know and mm. you know sergio oliver the guy was from a different he's not white you know that wasn't Sergio was Mr. Olympia before Arnold 
Mm-hmm. That's what I mean. It's so I don't know. What's how's how's that looking for you, uh, Tom? I mean, what, what's it's, what's your view on that? Well, it's the same sort of the protest in London at the moment. You've got a, a very small select few individuals that are going up to to throw cans and bottles and rocks at the the police, and then arguably the graffiti on uh, on, on on certain statues that again arguably probably shouldn't have been put up in the first place regarding certain slave traders. And, and the argument is, oh, well, they did charity work back in the day. It's like, well. So did Jimmy Savile. Jimmy Savile did some fucking charity work, but he's, he's not someone to put a statue up with. So, it, the, uh, but the the problem is, I think that the media will will, will hone in on on that very small minority one percent that are causing disruption and not documenting the ninety nine percent of the peace, peaceful protests that happened in London, and yeah. then that then that starts to fit certain people's narratives of, well, I've, I've you know I've I've had discussions with people that are that have completely ignored the fact that yet another black male has been killed at the hands of police brutality, but they're, they're more annoyed that their beloved Churchill statue has been graffitied. And it's like, well, where, so you've disregarded that this is happening, the real issue of racism here, and you're upset yeah. because a statue has been graffitied on. So, you know, it's always going to be hard, these sort of topics, but the, the, and it's not going to be portrayed in an even, even manner. <laughs> Right. I don't, wow. I, I, have, I don't know really much on it. I don't intend to get too deep on it. But somebody showed me a statistic. I don't know if the resource was um, uh, like viable or not. But somebody showed me a statistic of like unlawful killings in of police brutality over the last few years, and uh, and it was like double with white people over black people. Mm. Not that yeah. that maybe that means anything, but I don't <laughs> like when Lee Rigby got his head chopped off the other day. Like white mm. people just go. Mental. I don't know. It's obviously part of a bigger picture, but it's a, you know. But that's what it is. Uh, I think uh, a part of it. I mean, you, look, Tom, you're 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 the expert in, in the media here, so we're just gonna have to kind of you know you know put put things across and, and have your opinion back, uh, which is very highly appreciated, of course. Um, but for for me personally, when when it happened with Lee Rigby, the 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 media was showing the a Muslim, regardless of his color. Mm. So he wasn't pointed out as, as a black male. He was mm. pointed out as a, a terrorist Muslim. Mm. So here, here it's, it's the media, what it wants to let well, other right. people. Exactly. Usually. So they label you and everyone follows. And I'm sorry to say mm. there's a lot of sheep around here, you know, everyone copies. So again, it's like, I don't know what you guys think about this, but I think it's completely bullshit, you know, and, uh, yeah. and, and you know, to, to, to label someone. Yeah, hugely. But and you see the way it's reported and when, uh, when a white male will, will, will uh, commit a terrorist attack, he isn't labeled a, a terrorist. He's labeled someone that has mental health problems. Whereas uh, a Muslim carries out a terrorist attack and it's terrorist straight away. And, and in, in London in particular, around the world is so quick to judge and so quick to say, you know, this man. And, and, and you can just, you take one look on Facebook and you've got people sharing black and white people getting stopped or more so black, but people getting stopped just for the color. And there's been some, some UK uh, videos that have been reported on, on, on police officers that are being filmed and they're, they're outright saying, I stopped you because you're black. It's just like, Jesus Christ. And, and, and we never truly know. I think that's the biggest part of what's happening now. The, the, the black lives matter and the whole argument with all lives matter is like yes we understand all lives matter of course they do but at this current time black lives matter a little bit more than all lives matter at the moment and of uh, course and and for us for us white individuals we will never truly understand what they go through and, and i think that's that's what kind of needs to be hammered home of at the course. moment of course but you know, you know what the problem is though with like trying to obviously it's probably going to take hundreds of years to get to the point where people feel you know black people muslims and that could feel completely um comfortable in england and stuff like that you know because if you go to like i've done it you go to places like jamaica and stuff like that on like a holiday they tell you not to go to the local parts you know and i've done it and i tell you what you feel well uncomfortable (laughs) like you don't get treated the same and it's kind of I know it's, it's, it's kind of like that, you know, it's going to take hundreds of years for them to completely feel comfortable because at the end of the day is a different, although people, they're born, let's be careful I say this, although they're born in England, you know, like mm-hmm. there's a lot of blacks and Muslims and that that are actually English citizens because they've been born here. Mm-hmm. I understand why, um, I've completely lost track of where I'm going with this. I understand why they feel uncomfortable, basically. 
Because I would hard. feel because I would feel uncomfortable living in a black country. You know what I mean? Yeah, of course. Like, they're you, trying to fight for equality. It's gonna be it's gonna be difficult. Yeah, you can. I mean, I experienced that stuff. And and as talking about us not knowing what it feels like, we can certainly see what happens. Like the the simple task of me going to a festival and walking through and not getting patted down, but the guy in front of me who's black is getting searched and dog sniffed. It's like I can see this. I don't have to feel it. You know, it's yeah. just, it's fucking right in front of my eyes. And, and I grew up in sort of, uh, in Lucian, in, in, in an area where at times in certain classes, I was the minority in classes that there were more black children. And that for me, because I grew up with that, that's normal life. So when I move to an area, like I'm moving to, to sort of Sid Cup now, where it's predominantly white, then I start to feel, I almost feel uncomfortable. There's not, I don't have that, that ethnic minority, that ethnic right, minority right. around me, you know? So it's, it's just about upbringing again. Yeah, right. So, so John Lofthouse uh, is prime minister today. Okay. <laughs> You're in parliament. What would you do to stop this bullshit? Let everyone go back to the gym. They'd probably be a lot more chilled. You're prime yeah. minister. You're not, you're not, you know, you're not, for, right, forget I'm bodybuilding. Then. Huh? What would I do? What, what, what would you do? Imagine I'm you're sitting down. I'm not intellectual enough to answer this question. Dude, all you have to do is like hold a fucking baseball bat and run after them. I don't know. What, 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 yeah. what would you do? <laughs> it's really hard, right? I'd, I'd mm -hmm. step down and let TM Cycles be prime minister. Let him take it. He what, what would Tom, you're, you're the prime minister. This guy yeah. got sacked. Yeah. I'd legalize what? weed first thing. Yeah. Uh -huh. legal, legal, legalize weed. Then we could all chill out a little bit more. Legalize weed and open the gyms. That's, that's yeah. it. Yeah. I think that I think that I think those two <laughs> would cause. You have my vote right now, man. You have yeah, my vote. there you go. <laughs> you see, I'm, I mean, I'm. I uh, speaking of, of of cannabis or marijuana, whatever you want to call it. I yeah. uh, I'm a big believer in uh, in what it, it can do in a good way, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, being illegal uh, for so many years was uh, com a complete. Uh, I would say a big mistake, mm -hmm. uh, because because I think. If you look at places like Holland, mm -hmm. they never had issues. And uh, why would why did we have to adapt this kind of, you know, their their style today after how many years? Like what, sixty mm -hmm. years now? Mm -hmm. You know, fifty, sixty years. We could have done mm -hmm. that ages ago. We didn't have to find out today. Uh, I'm I'm I I would put my hand up. I smoke weed every every night uh, to relax me before I sleep. Obviously I went through a lot of pain and stuff like that, but I, I stopped judging people when they say, Oh, we smoke a bit of weed. Oh, sure, man. Well, who cares? Mm. You know? <laughs> you know? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Do you know what they found out about smoking weed before you go to bed though? What's that? Yeah. It completely blocks REM sleep. Mm. Really? Yeah. So although it sends you off into, I mean, Tom probably knows more about this than I do, but although it sends you off to sleep, yeah, it completely blocks REM sleep. And yeah. you can't. And the thing is, with REM sleep, is it's not like uh, you can never get it back. Mm. Yeah, of course, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's, the, it's the THC, in, and and that's why I will vape CBD. So very little, if any, THC. So I'll I'll vape CBD in the night in the night time to help. Probably like in in stressful situations, more so like contest preps when we when we're struggling with stress. And and I'm a big advocate of CBD. A lot of my yeah. clients are kind of using CBD infused oils for joint joint pain and mm -hmm. and it's a, just a tricky one because over here i think everyone's so politically correct in in the uk and also money the biggest thing you know big pharma companies the, the tory government and governments in general aren't going to allow something it means that they're out of pocket you know they must always be they must mm -hmm. always be the uh, benefiting financially from this but uh yeah, like like John said, it's similar sort of effects to alcohol. You know, when we go out on a night out, we seem to have a real, you know a real good sleep, but the quality of that just deducts massively. So it's kind of if we can try and get try and get the THC more so mid mid morning, early afternoon, then CBD more so at night. Then probably from a sleep perspective and sleep quality, it may be more beneficial. So what's your sleep stack right now, Tom? It'll be uh, Dr. Dean's sleep stack. You're aware of Dr. Dean Saint Martin? Yeah, fantastic, yeah, uh, fantastic guy for formulations in particular for for uh for certain products but i'll kind of use that with uh support max neuro so like some ashwagandha in there as well so i'll, I'll kind of consume the ashwagandha and put yeah. my blue light blocking glasses on after i've worked so so once once i've done that it kind of flips the switch and psychologically i'm like right work stopped it's time yeah. to relax try and limit phone phone usage in blue light yeah, but now but I, now i get roped into playing xbox with the boys so my sleep's kind of like 
it's Fair gone enough. back to being but back to being a 16 year old again but yeah i try and try and optimize it as much as I, possible. i'm back to playstation too man yeah, I'm yeah back yeah. to playstation uh john what's what's your sleeping stack honestly the most important thing for me getting my sleep in is is the phone thing is getting off the phone at eight o'clock you know i never used to struggle with sleep and then i tell you what i realized why i'm on the, how i realize i'm on the phone so much is i think i spoke to you about this um off air the other day is that i'm waking up every single morning and my traps the amount of tension in my traps is ridiculous and i feel like i i feel like i could get some scissors and like just cut cut a cord in them and i realize it's looking my, down my, my neck like, yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah it's looking like humans ain't built to do this fucking and i'm on my screen time because it's like four or five hours a day because of fucking speaking to people and stuff mm. like that that's, so like really, that, that's like that dip in your finger you know the, the, yeah. the thing you get that and it's like holy shit like all this yeah. time my, my joints are actually morphing yeah, around a fucking phone now yeah. i mean cause shit, I, I didn't pay attention to that I was yeah. talking about it all the time with their, with uh, with sitting down. Like mm. I have so many people come to me when I, like PT and that that they got bad lower backs, bad lower mm. backs. You know, shit hip mobility, shit ankle mm. mobility. It's because they sit down all day. You know, they sit down eating. They sit down on the way to work. They sit down for eight hours on the job. They sit down mm, on yeah. the way back to work. They sit down to eat dinner because they're mentally exhausted. Mm. It's like they're not fucking moving all day. You know? okay. And then they wonder why, and it's not really most of the time their lower back is even the problem. It's just yeah. Do you get chiro- do you get chiropractic work done regularly? No, I, I don't. Mus- I don't myself now because I make sure I'm walking about all day. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, yeah. Most of my j- up and uh, uh, my my job's kind of shifted to online now, so I'm going to be a mm. lot more conscious how much I'm moving. But obviously, being a PT, I, I was on my feet all day, so I've never had mm. any problems. I've made sure like the, the chiropractor is great, but it's like prevention's better than cure, and it's cliche, mm. but. It, so I try and talk to people about like, like drive home about mobility mm. and just keep moving. Cause at the end of the day, you're never going to be able to combat anything with chiropractory work. If you're not sorting out the source, which is mm. you know, what position. So, yeah. We're not even talking about sleep, by the way. <laughs> but the biggest thing for me is sleep is just get off my phone. That is the biggest thing. Yeah. 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 And a cold pill. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so yeah. Do you, cold you don't have any rituals, any rituals, you know, like, Cause I have, I have a whole ritual I can, I yeah. can send to you. It's like that long. Watch family guy. I like watch family. <laughs> uh, no, no. I mean, uh, I, I, I had issues with my sleep for so long cause, uh, because of the PTSD, you know, living yeah. through wars and everything. Yeah. Um, uh, my eyes always open, you know, like, mm. like I used to, I, at some point I kid you not, I was, I used to sleep with almost my eyes open. Yeah. Um, so, um, um, I started, uh, first of all with, uh, herbal teas and stuff like that to, you know, chamomile to calm me down some, uh, you know, B complex and uh, zinc magnesium and B6 and stuff like that. And I found out to some extent it will work. And then at some point it will just say, you know, what, <laughs> go fuck yourself. Mm-hmm. You know, you're, you know, we're having enough of you now. You can, you can take care of your own sleep. Mm-hmm. But then, um, uh, I started things like, as I said, as Tom said, uh, ashwagandha, you know, there's a helicon from JP. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I started using that. Um, I obviously kept my chamomile tea in. Um, I start getting rid of my phone. Uh, lavender sprayed over my my uh, yeah. uh, my uh, pillows. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, GABA. I st- I used it for a certain time, but um, I I think I was overdosing with that because I get tingles yeah. up my neck. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I mean, um, I, I have a whole kind of stack that I use before bed. Mm-hmm. And, um, and, it's, and obviously, when I stop using that stack, I know that for a fact that I'll be putting in some, uh, some let's call it medicinal marijuana in me uh, yeah. to help me with the sleep. But and as again, and I, I would say this clearly, I don't get quality. Mm-hmm. I don't get quality. Here, everyone says, like, I sleep well. Really? You don't, I don't think you mm. sleep well because I can see the energy that you have is not actually there. So mm. it's the quality that you get in your sleep. It's not the hours. You sleep. Do, you, uh, do you have a supplement with melatonin? Um, I do have melatonin uh, somewhere around next to mm. somewhere in my bedroom. Uh, yeah. But um, again, do you, do, you, do you have this thing when, when you have so many pills to take and you mm. kind of think, you know what? I forgot today. I fuck it. I don't want to do it. Yeah. Or you miss one of them out, you know, like you yeah. need a sorter. Melato- Melatonin is a tricky one. Cause, uh, Ben Escrow, uh, who owns DeNovo, 
it, the sleep stack's fantastic, but I find dosing mel- melatonin is such a tricky one. Anything too less, nothing, no effect. Anything too more, and then the next morning I'm completely out, you know. So like yeah. finding that happy medium of like two meg melatonin is okay, but I tend to just use it when you're switching time zones. So whenever we go to New York or, or fly yeah. to Texas, for example, on the crossover at that point, just so we can kind of mimic naturally, that's when I tend to use it. Right, right. Um, there's a there's a question here that um, that is quite cool. G- GDA. Mm. Um, so, uh, how do you take it? When and how much carbs should we consume with that? Mm. What did you say? GDA. GDA. Yeah. Mm. I tend to uh, we'll we'll program a GDA in probably in the deeper stages of an off season, once our blood glucose readings in the AM kind of skewed a little bit. But even, even before that, I'll, I'll, if, if blood glucose is elevated a little bit, always check the, obviously the pre pre bed meal. Sometimes if that's too close to obviously when we go to sleep, that circulating glycogen can still be there. And it may just be a case of some water, some salt water to, to help lower that. But it's tend, it tends to be like the, the, the deeper stages in our season. Once we're pushing maybe in excess of 500 to 600 carb a day, and it's quite yeah. nice to it's quite nice to wake up and uh, to have your GDA with like a, a a fasted bout of cardio as well. I find that that helps clear really well. That's so, that's what I do. That's what I do. Yeah. Um, uh, have you tried it before? Um, I don't even know what GDA is, bro. Glucose disposal agent. Disposal agent. Uh, what's that? Yeah. Let's 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 uh, let's uh, let's put it that way. Um, imagine. It's it's the natural way of taking insulin, <laughs> right? Yeah. You know, so let, let's for me to just completely simple uh, put it in a simple uh, text for you. It's it's like it's like the the natural way of taking uh, a, a dose of insulin uh, for you to be able to uh, for your body to be able to absorb your carbs. You know, hmm. um, so um, I I basically do that I fasted. Uh, my first meal obviously has the most carbs, uh, even 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 more than my pre and post workout meals. So mm-hmm. I I do the GDA at that point, and uh, dude, I feel I feel I feel something different. Mm-hmm. Never used it. Yeah, it, yeah it's, it, it's interesting. It's very interesting, very interesting. I think I think it's uh, that revolution of uh, of uh, uh, manufacturing um, nutrition, you know, like sports mm-hmm. nutrition supplements supplements generally that that i think that's the revolution at that point that that you remember creatine was was the thing for decades i yeah. think gda is the, the new thing now mm. i'm gonna have to do more more research on it yeah, get, yeah get, but, uh, i don't know if your sponsors have them though i don't know strom strom sports do a really good gda i think it's called glycomax really good uh, HD Glyco, which is the one I use. Oh, Glyco yeah. HD is from HD Muscle. Oh, that's my mm-hmm. sponsor. Um, I use them, and it's fucking awesome, man. Really yeah, we've, good. We've just started stocking HD at Insight. Uh huh. We're, we're doing a HD Matador. Is it Matador? Yeah, they do one. They do a really good one. I don't know. I don't know if it's still in circulation. I think it's still in circulation. They got their products kind of drop off the face of the earth and then come back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. So, so Tom, do you have any any sponsors? Yeah, I'm with uh, Insight Insight Supplements. So we kind of specialised in in American supplements that kind of push the boundaries of maybe pre workouts and things like that. And now we're we're branching out into to sort of bigger companies now, like Ghost. <sighs> and uh, yeah, they just do some really nice protein. It's always good to have on on hand on, on prep. You know, when we've got that sweet tooth. Yeah, of course. Because the the reason why I'm asking you here is because um, there's a question from one of one of my followers um, asking you if you're sponsored by a company mm. and um, the, the company obviously uh, not demands, but they ask you to post, you know, one, one post a week. And how would you be su- a successful ambassador using social media? Mm. So it's, uh, it's especially, I think even if you strip it right back and then start to, to discuss business with, when a company, approaches me the first thing I, I think is does it fit in line with my business and if it doesn't then there's no point me going down that route because then i look like a sellout i don't use it and, and, and people start to have a, a perceived you know thought process of, of what sort of person i am if it does fit my 
my sort of brand and my business at that point, I'll then show them the figures. This is what conversion I get. This is the engagement I get. I want X amount of, of money per month plus this commission and some products. And then you kind of haggle your way there. I think far too many people, once they start increasing their following, they'll just jump straight into to business with a, they'll just jump straight into bed with a business because it, you know, they're excited and it looks good on, on them. But in terms of using your social media, reviews nowadays are so popular and you look at unboxing videos on youtube and and taste yeah. test review yeah they're massive and even like the kids nowadays kids have got hundreds of thousands of views because they're like re reviewing themselves eating sweets and stuff like that so that market in particular that that interactivity of, of watching people consume food you know if i have like a really tasty ghost drink for example and i'm like this is fucking really nice people just instantly buy it but but what what is um what needs to be nailed as well is when i first start with insight they used to send me products that were garbage and i used to drink it and say this is this is dog shit and it kind of put their back it kind of put their back up a little bit because it's like oh we, this is our product but then i said i'm not pushing this product that tastes like shit so you can you kind of find that ground where you get respected for your opinion you know of course i mean uh, what about you john I had a similar thing jumping into bed with um, SciTech after I won uh, the British finals in 2017. I literally got off stage. I was new to everything. Guy come up to me. It was uh, Adam Taylor. Mm. And he was like, oh, have you got a sponsor? I was like, no. He was like, we're SciTech. We want to sponsor you. I was like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, definitely. And then only about, what, 12 months down the line, I had to leave them because I realized this just wasn't the products that I wanted to push. Mm. You know, It wasn't the company it wasn't a company that I even wanted to be involved with. You know, mm. I think it's important that you get with a company that is, um, is in line with you as a person. Mm. You know, that Tom says you have to be, you have to be confident in what you're pushing. You know, you have to be confident in what you're talking about. Otherwise it's just, of course, it's it disingenuous and, and, um, you know, you can lose respect for that. So mm. I didn't, I, I didn't have a sponsor for a couple of years and then until old school came about, I'm with, yeah. and I tell people outright like old school, the, supp the, the supplements are cool, but I'm more with them because of the, the ethos themselves. You know, the fact that they're Tom Platts is an ambassador, Sam is an ambassador. I'm with them more because of the ethos behind the company and what they're about than the products mm. themselves. I mean, you know, I'm not, not everybody knows I'm not really the product. I'm not the product guy. You know, I never have been that guy. I never will be. But the, the ethos behind the company meant means. Do you, do you have targets that you need to hit, like as a as a as a sponsored athlete, or how how does that work for your side? No, I don't. If I'm honest, I think with me they're more um, concerned with my competitions and where I'm going with competing. Mm. You know, that's that's think, that's yeah. good actually. Yeah, yeah. I, th I think the the I think the onus is very much on the individual now. So if I want a, if I want a, a, a healthy commission at the end of the month it's it's my decision do i do a, a yeah, post yeah. every day but you've got to find that happy medium because you don't want to become a walking advertisement on instagram you know you, you see yes. the top influencers now they leave love island every fucking day is three stories buy this and no one buys it so yeah. i tend to try and find that happy medium of maybe like two or three swipe ups uh, and then like if someone asks me a question on instagram i'll print screen that question put it on the story for everyone else to see so it's just you don't want to look like a, a, a sellout yeah, almost sellout. What I'm more look for for a company at the minute is that they're going to support me in in getting yeah. further in bodybuilding. You know, that's what I'm yeah. more look for a company at the minute that they're going to support me with travel, flats, accommodation, food when I get out there. Mm -hmm. Help, you know, if, if I'm in America, you know, the the two companies that I'm with are ones in California, ones in Florida, so I've got connections out there. So that's what's more important to me. Mm -hmm. with that's great. Company, you know? Good, yeah, that's yeah. great. Because I've I've heard that uh, a lot of a lot of companies they they put you know they get you on board. And what happens here is like, okay, you've got X amount of followers. We expect this amount of sales from you. Mm. And they put a time. Do it, which is why yeah, they ask yeah, for yeah. it because people do it. People mm -hmm. sell out. People sell out, you know? Yeah. It's easy. They don't, that's why nobody gets paid no more. They don't have to pay nobody for supplements no more because they can get like 20, 20 dudes who have got a few thousand followers that are just going to push products all day because they want to say, oh, I'm an ambassador of so-and-so. Here's my 10% yeah. off code. Yeah, Everyone knows yeah. there's a big difference between being an ambassador and an actual, you know, an actual a, a sponsor. Mm. You know, someone who's actually going to yeah, work of course. With, support you and actually help. That's, that's where you get a good relationship with a sponsor that they're not mm -hmm. just taking. At the end of the day, they don't, you, they need you. You don't fucking need them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If nobody, if nobody was it, like, buying the products you know if mm -hmm. we weren't pushing the products and no nobody was buying the products then they don't have a business mm -hmm. so 
so everybody goes to companies thinking that they're having, you know, they're getting this favor done for them that they're going to get a couple hundred pound of supplements a month that cost them fucking nothing. See, now this is funny. This is funny. John, this is you, you had, you had a post, I think yesterday talking about a person who was using fake weights. Mm. Yeah. Would would anyone go very that far? <laughs> you got very emotional. That's why I'm actually. I don't normally react to this sort of stuff. <laughs> no, I I'm leave shocking. that. I leave that to Tom. <laughs> uh, no, 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 I, I need to ask their opinions from me. But yeah? the thing is, would you go that far in in trying to impress your sponsors to use fake weights? He's not trying to impress his sponsors, though, is he? Let's oh, oh I don't know. I don't know how. I, I don't want to. I don't want to put a structure to the question, but. Do you, like, is he going that far to impress anyone? Or, I mean, what do you think he was doing? I don't think he's trying to impress no man. You have to look at, like, look at it from his point of view. There's many different things that you could say. Like, what if the guy is doing so many videos on YouTube? He's 40 plus eight years old. He doesn't really want to be lifting all that weight all the time. Maybe he put a couple of plates on there because he don't want to get injured. You know, mm. I don't. I don't necessarily think he was trying to lie about anything because he probably can lift four plates mm. i don't dispute that he couldn't lift like deadlift four plates you know mm. all right, but what, what, what are you asking him to do to at the beginning of the video say all right guys this is you know how heavy you got to, uh, how heavy you have to lift to get big i'll just say you know these are fake plates <laughs> i don't know it's just a bit of a but i don't think he's being disingenuous by even doing it because he probably could lift that Maybe he just doesn't want to lift that. I don't know. So mm. it, it more pissed me off. You tell you what, it more pissed me off when Fuad and Ben on the um, on their podcast started going. Oh, you in. mean you mean you mean oh, Oprah? Huh? Yeah? You mean Oprah? Oprah. Yeah, I call I call Fuad Abiyad Oprah now because uh, he's he's got his finger up everyone's ass. Uh, <laughs> so literally, what what it more annoyed me is they started attacking him, saying that well, if he's lied about this. Mm. Um, maybe he's lying about being natural, you know? And then Ben was like, oh yeah, he does look really lean. He does look like he has that sort of hardness. And I was like, I was getting pissed off because I've been leaner than that before with no drugs, you know? And I know mm. all the natural guys on the scene. Like, I just I talked to AJ Morris. I've seen yeah, so yeah, yeah. natural guys that get shredded out of their mind. Mm. You know? yeah, and yeah, now nice, you're nice. discrediting, now you're discrediting his whole career. I was like, motherfucker, he's been doing this for years, built up an empire to help people. And the information he puts out is fucking good. And you just want to sit there and slate him and you've done nothing. It just, mm. it just pissed me off a little bit. Mm. It's not like he's trying to be Brad Castleberry, trying to break yeah, yeah. breaking benching records. Yeah, 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 of course. So, <laughs> is, uh, I know, I know what you mean. But Tom, sorry for asking, how old are you? 26. 26. So... Let me let me go back to my days. I'm 40, so I'm a bit older than you guys. So back in the day, we used to watch, uh, we used to have magazines, Flex Magazine, Iron Man, uh, Muscle Development, whatever. We had them in actual magazines. So years down the line, obviously we we were like, when we get a new magazine, like, dude, this is one week of reading, you know, like mm -hmm. this is valuable. No social media, none of that. So we used to watch Lee Haney or Dorian's first, you know, photo shoot, and guts. you know, all these came in pictures. So obviously we thought these guys were lifting, you know, real weights. Mm. So fast forwarding years down the line, I was working for a company called biotech nutrition. I was, I was their secretary here in the, in the UK. So I was speaking to Samantha Lund, who was the, uh, the editor of flex magazine in the UK. And her father is Chris Lund. Who's the, best ever photographer for flex uh, so the, the weeder okay so i was speaking to her i was like do you know all these uh my father's studio all these uh um plates are all fake and i and i my face went from this to mm. no you're telling me all these years i've been watching them lift fake weights like yeah dorian yates is the only guy who actually lifted real weights in front of the camera yeah so so What's the fucking difference? We were watching them think, <laughs> you know, <laughs> they're still there. And that's what I'm saying. They weren't being disingenuous because they probably could lift that weight, you know. Mm. But they're doing a photo shoot. They're depleted. Yeah, they're, yeah, yeah. You know, we've got exactly. a show next week. They don't want to get injured. And this is mm. this is what I'm saying. Maybe maybe he's coming at it from that angle, you know. Mm. Like I'm sure I'm sure Bruce Lee wouldn't be able to punch you and take your heart out from your chest. I'm sure he mm. can't do that. 
but it's fucking acting you know that's the, yeah, yeah, his yeah. way of you know that's the way it should be so your social media doesn't actually tell much about you personally but mm -hmm. about what you do you know and mm -hmm. and we're trying to be as as real as possible about it but i think i think using fake weights uh to to advertise is one thing using fake weights to tell people i just lifted fucking 400 kilos off the floor that's a complete different yeah yeah. Of course, yeah, and it's clout. It's clout, you know. You, you, it's the wow factor, isn't it? You don't, you don't go to bodybuilding shows to watch the seventy kilo lot. Like you go to watch the hundred and twenty kilo heavyweights on stage. People on Instagram, when you're scrolling through, you don't look at the guy lifting sixty. You look at the guy lifting, you know, hundred and sixty. So it's that, and people have tapped into that. Brad Castlebury, in particular, has tapped into that wow factor and gone right. Shit, I'm getting so many views, so much likes. In turn, that's then getting me richer. So you know, it's, it's a not very nice path to go down no. but it's a it's a I, I liked your your post you were very emotional and i feel like felt like you're gonna cry thing, any minute it's the other thing that i said about muhammad like the, the muhammad ali thing you know muhammad ali used to say like i don't have all these nice watches and nice cars and stuff like that because i really want it i have it because people because otherwise people don't listen to me is that mm -hmm. so i need all the nice stuff the nice house the nice cars the nice watches and then people will listen to me and in turn I can get my message across. So that's mm. how I see it. I don't see that he was being disingenuous, the fact that he couldn't lift that weight. You know, there was that's what and that's what that's what pissed me off because they was like, oh, it doesn't look like he's barely lifted over seen <coughs> in his life. Like deadlifting. Like three oh, okay, okay. I'm I'm like, actually he's been lifting for years, of course he can. <laughs> I could do it when I was a stick when I was eighteen. Like I <laughs> you know, I'm I'm gonna it call I'm gonna call Tom out right now because I actually can relate to what you're saying to what Tom is doing on his social media, which is fucking amazing. Tom's I, social you, I, I will, I'll, I just want to go out on a, on a whim here and honestly say that I have, I use Tom's social, his YouTube, his Instagram as a, as a standard to try and push me. And I'm not even like, I've nicked some of the stuff he's done, although I'm trying to turn it into my own thing now. I'm, I'll say I'm it. A, it's, yeah. a compl it's a compliment. He shouldn't be yes. annoyed about it, you know? And I, now I'm I agree. Find, like, my own way of doing things, but if, at the end of the day, if you want to be good at something, you do, mm. you follow someone who's better at it than you, don't you? That's how yeah, I work. Of course. I'm not afraid. To, you, you, you took the words to out of my mouth. Tell you, you that. Actually, to yeah, tell you that. Yeah, 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 absolutely. You took the words out of my mouth, actually. But what I wanted to say here, Tom actually caught me at least six times on his social media right now, like in the past 72 hours, okay, where he, what he, the, the, the style of his posts are so unique mm. that he catches me to go on there, gets a view, gets a like after he catches me the first second of what he has to say. Because if in the first second I don't feel it, I'll fucking mm. flip over. Yeah. All right? So he, lo he loses a view, plus he doesn't get a like on it, and there's no exposure. Yeah. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? What, what the tricky thing that he's done to us, I'm going to call it out. Sorry, bro. Hooked us all. Sorry. What he does, he puts the, the first image of what you're trying to look at is – a hot chick mm -hmm. so what we guys do <laughs> click on it straight away like oh shit this this girl is actually gonna squat or something and it flips over to what he wants you to hear <laughs> okay and then That's what happens he does that. you don't you don't flick away because you're still you're still your your brain as us as humans your brain is still in that picture okay mm -hmm. so in that first second or two he grabs you with a product he grabs you with information that you think, you know what? I forgot about the girl now. I want to listen to that guy. Yeah. What has he got to say? So, dude, I take my hat off for you. I for, appreciate for, it. For, for like that a, amazing he's, style. He's the mm. UK's guilty pleasure, isn't he? You know what? <laughs> I said, I took my hat I'm not off for even, I don't even feel guilty about it. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, no, I, mean, I, I swear to God, I'm going to actually adapt, you know, adopt the, the style. It, 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 yeah, of course. I mean, it, it is that age-old sex sells, but then you you also want to sex sells, but then also provide some value to it. So if I can if I can draw them in from the sex, and that's brilliant. They'll they'll probably get the sex, but at the end of the the information, but in the in the middle, if I can can can, can grab them and and speak about products or whatever, then I've done my job. So and it's the same with YouTube. You know, big YouTubers now, will, will, you know, thumbnails are massive, and it and it works. Yeah. I love it. I absolutely love it. And as I said, I, I, I honestly congratulate you for that style 
I'm not sure if it's been used before, or I'm sure mm. you've, you have your own style as well. Mm. So honestly, man, I've learned in 72 hours, I've learned from your social media more than I've ever done in, uh, in the past, what decade now we've been using social media. Yeah. I mean, like it or not, I am, I am my age. Um, it, we're, we're the generation that was pre social, uh, p- sorry, pre social media yeah. and now, so we're living it. So we've made every mistake on the book. We've replied to people swearing at them. We've yeah. argued with people for no reason. Uh, we got into discussions that we have nothing to do with. Mm-hmm. So now looking at you guys guiding us being the mm-hmm. older guys is fucking amazing. Yeah. You know, I, I really love it. And, and honestly, man, keep doing what you're doing. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. I think, I mean, we're the kind of generation, John, that have, uh, we grew up with, without the iPads and the iPhones. We, we had, you know, I played football and I had toys to play with. But the younger yeah. generation now, they, they grow up with this stuff. Right. So I think it, it makes us unique in a way because we've lived the best of both. We've had that, yeah, we've had the toys and, and now we've managed to morph and mold ourselves into really exposing this. You know, we've kind of almost beaten this rat race. Uh, a lot of my right. friends don't do the nine to five anymore. They do the influencer stuff. They do the Instagram and they're making 10 times more than their, their mum or dad thought they would by going into a job in, I don't know, of like course. an accountant. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I know a few. Shall we go through some questions? Yeah, do it. Yeah. So we can, after the questions, we can, uh, we can, uh, wrap it up, but, uh, these questions are, are quite cool actually. I'm sweating. Um, I'm nervous. <laughs> yeah, come on, man. All right. The, the questions for both of you, but mainly John, cause he's a pro. Oh, fuck. Is he? Bro. He's a pro. All right. So right. W- if, if it means. See, by me, your heart out. <laughs> it says here, if it means that you have to use a bit of synthol to win shows, would you do that? No. Straight up, I wouldn't. Mm. I don't believe in it. Tom? Yeah, no, same. No, it's, uh, not, doesn't appeal. Yeah. So, synthol and on, on that. Okay, sim, for me, you know, I've got nothing against anybody else using whatever, but for me, synthol and insulin don't really have a place in bodybuilding. Mm. That's just my. Milos says different about about, about uh, insulin. No, I just don't. I just. I, I know. I know guys. You know, and I'm sure you know guys as well who have got massive without ever touching insulin. Of course, no, absolutely. Listen, I'll put this out out to everyone, guys. That's whoever tough. is listening to this, insulin. Insulin is a powerful tool in bodybuilding, mm. but you have to be so precise because yeah. one inch too far, one inch too close, you miss it. You're fucked. Yeah. yeah 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 whoever all the kids are listening to this i'm telling you up here we've i've made every single mistake on the book believe me um so hold on well, well, before you go on though people are using that um me- me- metaphor metaphor mm-hmm. yeah people are using that is that not I, I don't i don't look into this stuff is that not very similar though it's called sight enhancement i know mm-hmm. it's different in the way what's it supposed to do like something to do with there, there, there are different ones. There's pump and pose, and there's different just for different ones. But I mean, I think if if we look at it right now, I don't know if you're aware of this, uh, Tom, but uh, Hadi Shupan had had synthol in his shoulders, mm-hmm. and backstage he was told, "I we know that you're trying to get rid of it. You know, we've all done stupid shit before, but it will still you will still be um, marked down for them." Yeah. So it's, you know, we have to understand that we will get marked down. You know, mm. it's very simple. Um, okay. So no synthol for you two, huh? No. no. And, and site injections? As in injecting As in, a certain area? Certain areas like shoulder, lats. Some people do fucking oh, traps. I, mean, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I tend to, to rotate site injections from the standpoint of scar buildup, but not if I inject my traps, I'm going to get fucking big traps. Just yeah, from, of course. From, yeah. I don't think but, it, is it? No. no. You can't, this, fucking, people have said this to me. Oh, yeah, jab your calves, John, because you've got small calves. Like, Who work. told you that? Huh? Who you told you calves? that? I think nah, my calf. First of all, first of all, no one yeah. injects calves because it's fucking painful as fuck. And yeah. you've got good calves. 
Now I've got one good calf. I just uh, only show you. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, at the end of the day, on stage, well, my, you my left, show me what you my left, me. Yeah, because of my left knee injury, my left calf's like inch and a half smaller than my right. Really? And it's noticeable as well. It's not just not noticeable. Trust me, it's noticeable. But I only put my right one back. You never really look at the left one. Mm. I've got higher, I got higher calf insertions. Same. I'm the same. I've got very small ankles that people think I don't have anything above that. But then when I pull my trousers off, like yeah. upwards, they see the calf. They're like, mm, yeah, okay. You know, it's, it's quite funny. Um, yeah. But speaking of calves, do you know that there's a rumor that Flex Wheeler had calf implants? No. Yeah, I've seen that. Did he? Yeah. I don't believe so. it because my coach is James Mellon from what, mm. and all the Welsh dudes have got massive calves. All, all of, of them. them. Not and even kidding. Wrists. And forearms. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Not forearms. Even, I don't know why. No, even kidding. I, I, I know three Welsh guys and they've all got massive calves. James said it's the heels. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah, he said it's okay. the Welsh heels. <laughs> Probably. Is James Llewellyn actually Welsh though or is he English living in Wales? I thought he was Welsh. I don't know. I just called him. I, I, thought, I thought he's from Essex. No, nah, he's, nah, he's lived all around, but he's Welsh. Oh, okay. Throw some more so, questions. Uh, Tom, Tom where's, your, where's your heritage from? Are you from London originally? Uh, Scottish. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. They're proper warriors, man. These guys. <laughs> warriors. I'm something. Oh, yeah. Okay. Half, half my family is from Sunderland. Mm. Really? Yeah. Well, What's that? Is that? That's not Geordie, is it? Is that Newcastle? Uh, not really. Yeah, no. Oh, okay. The quest. Second question: Do you think sugar and refined food is the reason for new competitors looking like dog shit? Sorry, that's Ooh, the question. That's a good question. That's a very good question, and it's going to take another hour. But it's it's actually very you know. Tom, you start because. Uh, Mm. You're the intellectual one here. I think there's a. <laughs> I, don't I, I think there's a. There's definite. There's definite looks with people that kind of push the IIFYM a calorie is a calorie to the quote unquote clean eaters. I think you, you and I've been there. I've been in both camps, and I'm firmly now back in. Or when contest preps resume, I will be very much in that sort of clean, cleaner eating. Just because I think hormonally, once you start playing around with these high sugars and dropping insulin spike, drop spike, that you can, I feel like you can see that on certain competitors. Mm. So I definitely think there is an argument there, probably not from like the sort of scientific aspect of, of fat gain and, and fat mass, but visually, I think that that higher sugar diet, you can see that appearance most definitely. Mm. John? Yeah, no, I think the same. I don't think, I don't think you can really cheat the... Um cheat the methodology that clean eating is the way to get absolutely peeled out of your mind you know mm -hmm. but i see guys who try and get you try and get what the, the the thing is with the um what's it if whatever if it fits your macros mm. like i know you do it tom didn't you but you do it the right you do it the right way you do it still with clean foods and then maybe in your off season yeah you fit in something that yeah. is a little bit more um tasty but yeah. you see some guys do it and they're just using it they're, they more abuse it as a way just to eat whatever the fuck they want mm. to get in shape and it doesn't really work but on, honestly rather than the carbohydrate and sugar thing i honestly just um don't think most people train hard enough still mm. yeah and, and, I don't, and I yeah and, and it's not because i'm saying oh like you don't train hard as in like like you're a pussy as in i don't think a lot of people have been exposed to training that hard mm. Absolutely, we we all think we train hard. Yeah, like some people, some people are born with it. Like they have that natural fucking, like animal, um, like an animal in the gym. Whereas some people they have to be exposed to it, you know. But like I was ex when I initially started training with Luke, I was exposed to a much higher level of training intensity. You know, and when you realise like that's the standard, you know what I mean. I think a lot of people haven't been exposed to training hard enough. I think we're big on online coaching and that now. But I think a lot of people would actually um, uh, benefit from maybe trying to seek out some one to one, mm -hmm. some one to one time. You know, with somebody who really knows how to train hard, and even if you've got to travel three four hours to go and see that person, I think yeah. you would benefit from and, that. And that is, and because their expenditure isn't high because they're 
their, their interpretation of intensity being higher isn't in fact higher because their expenditure expenditure is still probably low. The fact that they're consuming all of this sugar, yeah. you know, and you look, you yeah. look at guys that train fucking hard and they use that Perry workout window where they consume slightly higher sugars, but that's just being, being eaten up for fuel, you know, yeah, and then yeah, argue, I'll give, I'll, Arguably, you look at the likes of Berto Nunes as well, who has like pop tarts and yeah. foods that you think no way, but then you look at Berto on stage and he's yeah. fucking inside out. So, yeah, well, definitely what John said. I was having muffins and cookies after training all the way up until um, into my shows, you know? Everybody mm -hmm. knows that. I'll put it on my ground. But it's like the level of training intensity. I'll, I will never shift the focus off of training intensity and posing. You know, I always try and tell people like the focus should be on training intensity and posing. I will never even let a coach, even if they're coaching me, I wouldn't let a coach push me to a point where I felt my training intensity was um, like being jeopardized. You know? yeah. I would say I would say the cardio is too high. We need to pull back on the cardio because that's I get shredded by never backing off training intensity. I don't mm. I don't back off the whole way through. You know, yeah. I have backed off before, like a week out from a show or two weeks out but it doesn't bring about the same look for me. Mm. You know, training intensity has to be the focus. Always, mm. always has to be the focus. Because I've, I've seen, you know, a lot of people are obviously the, the huge argument right now that everyone's saying, oh, the, the 90s, people used to, you know, the bodybuilders used to look better. Now we've got guys who were not in condition. I don't think people can, see, because we, we're in the industry, we, we, we're passionate about the sport. We can tell who's dieted hard and trained hard just by standing on stage. And what I see through the nineties to today, I think it's not the conditioning that is lacking. It's the deeper cuts <laughs> yeah, in the legs, you know, and, and it's not you that, I mean, the, you, you know, you up and the detail gets lost, you know, that's mm. what it is. The that's thing is they, is. They, they eat more now. There's more mm. supplements there. You know, obviously insulin gets taken now differently. Um, using refined food i mean look at look at uh juan, juan morel you know mm -hmm. juan morel is is fucking huge you look at him you know taking pictures selfies in, in his bathroom and the guy looks sick he stands on stage and there's hardly any lines on his legs mm -hmm. i mean this is all the refined food that that people are trying to probably cr you know cry loud about if that makes sense mm -hmm. you know um well, I'm, I'm not i'm not 100 sure obviously but as i can see how the eras changed and how what I see today on stage, there isn't many, there aren't many conditioned guys with deep cuts in the legs where you can actually put your finger in, like back mm. in the day, you know? Mm. Um, you know, it's uh, hard to say, huh? hard to say. <laughs> the last thing that I said. They're, right. just big, they're inflated, they're just inflated, ver inflated versions of the 90s, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah of course there is a limit people like to think that there isn't a limit with bodybuilding you know we want to keep pushing it keep pushing it keep pushing it mm -hmm. but i think the limit's gone over that's why i do mm -hmm. classic you know, Tom probably agrees that i mm -hmm. think the limit's been found i think there is a limit of how big you can get without mm -hmm. sacrificing actually how good you look mm -hmm. that's why classic's yeah. doing well i don't think classic's yeah. never going to take over the open but that's no. why classic's doing well because yeah guy, you you almost get bored now you see rammy every year you think oh fucking how how big yeah. is he going to come in now? It's like shit. Exactly. Exactly. No, they don't look that good though. Let's have it right. No, of course not. They don't look good. Really? No. Like, they don't, it don't look good. No. Well, it's always no. going to be an attraction because of their freak shows. Of course. Of course. But we, we, have to be, we have to be optimistic about this because Sean Roden hasn't mm. been knocked away. No. So for me, for me, he's still a champion. And that look gave him a win over... Mm one of the best bodybuilders of all time. Let's not argue about this. Phil Heath mm -hmm. is probably one of the best bodybuilders of all time. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he, he kind of got him out of the way. So if that look is what we're heading towards, then bodybuilding is still alive. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. um, but if we're going to go back to Roley and people like that, and of course, you know, there's a reason why they, they, they're not champions yet, you know, not, not taking the credit away from them, but mm. they're not crisp enough to be champions yet. Mm. so uh uh let's uh let's hope things get back to normal <laughs> what was rami one anyway exactly uh, uh <laughs> new york pro first uh then he won another show i think he won prague didn't he i don't know i think prague or is it roly i'm not sure yeah, oh, I'm, not, I'm not sure man but the thing is the the the, the I, I hope people don't sit at home here and look at 
people like Rami and p- people like this and think, you know what, this is where bodybuilding is heading. And as I said, it's not an insult towards Rami mm-hmm. or anyone there because I, I love every single bodybuilder because I know how much hard work it takes. But people have to look at aesthetics, man. You know, mm-hmm. they, we need to turn back into aesthetics, uh, balance, uh, conditioning, you know. That's why I love Dexter. Mm-hmm. Uh, another question here. We'll wrap it up. I want to eat. Yeah, me too. So, because I need to choose the best questions, because some of the questions here are like r- literally. Come on, man. You know, um, who would you like to see winning the Olympia this year? What category? Open. I'm not concerned with it. I, I, I generally <laughs> I, I only I only tune in for classic now. Like I'll wake up at four, three a.m. watch watch Chris, watch Brio, watch the guys. Right. It doesn't it? Does even the, even the size of it now is like okay. I saw that when I first started. You know, so you up. go ahead, go with the classic. Let's go with classic. If you're if you're into the classic, we're classic. Uh, we're classic. I'm a classic, and we're all three classic competitors. So. Uh, who are the competitors this year? Uh, oh, I know. I want um, Ralph Diesel. I'd like to see oh. him win. Mm. Mm-hmm. Good, good, good choice. Yeah. Keon looks Keon looks dangerous as well. He posted a picture a couple of days ago. I thought, shit. Doing too yeah, 12, though. yeah. No, yeah. Is, well, you never know. Is he oh, decided really? definitely? I think there was kind of like a. Oh really? Oh, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. I thought he was going too 12. Mm, he looked too slow. <laughs> Well, um, he's only short though, isn't it? That's that's their problem. Yeah, yeah. they they always get overshadowed. Although they look massive pictures, they're only small. Yeah, (laughs) I'm being I'm being biased here because I love I love classic competitors so much. Um, I I can't point one of them out Mm. because everyone says you know you know Stan you know the French guy Stanimal. Mm-hmm. Everyone thinks like he's not good enough, and you know he did an open class. He did he he did an open show once, not le- not long ago. I think it was last year. But I still think the guy looks amazing as a classic competitor. You know, mm-hmm. um, he works hard. Uh, he's got beautiful aesthetics. Maybe not the condition that we're looking for, like you know, the other guys. But um, I think you're wrong. I think he's got a good condition, not a great aesthetics. Mm-hmm. Look at look at his poses. His front poses are amazing, man. Like the the he's, he hits his vacuum nicely. Um, he's uh, he's got nice sweep, small waist. But I don't know. I don't know. Maybe maybe I look more into him wanting. I want that look to be in the open class. Does that make sense? Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, do you, do you realize that Brian, uh, Brian Asley actually? blocked every single classic competitor yeah he blocked me Did he? Oh, he blocked me too he blocked me too and i'm and i'm his i'm his teammate why why what some psychological gain or yeah 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 yeah. he says yeah, he don't, yeah. don't want to see no one classic so if he comes across any classic person blocks them i'm blocked fucking hell I'm he's got, got time on his hands I'll, huh I'll, yeah it was after after i won the um the pro card not long after that, obviously, I suppose my picture went about a little bit. Yeah, and yeah. Got blocked. So he's fuck. Well, there you are. It shows. Uh, it shows what kind of champion he is. But uh, mm-hmm. although he, I'll, I'll probably bump into him very soon because we're, the, you know, we're probably on the same booth in most most places. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I, I will make sure I'll bring it up. Don't worry, <laughs> <laughs> guys. We we're better wrap it up. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Tom, for being here. Uh, Thank you for having me on. Pleasure, man. Been a big I pleasure. Appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, John, as usual, thank mm. you very much for uh, for having us in your house. <laughs> 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 good, right, n- next time, bring the beers down. Yeah. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the strippers. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> right, man. Thanks a lot, and. Uh, before we end this, guys, leave leave your comments down there. Um, subscribe, like, and uh, Tom, what's what's your uh, what's your uh, social media? What's your Instagram? It's uh, TM Cycles, and that will cover all of my social media. 
guys, if you haven't followed this guy, he's the guy for social media. Follow him yes. closely. And uh, John Lofthouse, as usual, um, you know his uh, social media will probably be down there too. Thanks, everyone, and we'll see you guys soon. Thank you. Thanks.